For the following exercises, perform the indicated operation and express the result as a simplified complex number. Okay, so for these, we're just doing simple math, right? Addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division to complex values. Complex numbers are just things that have I's in them, and we see them all throughout here. Now, we've done tons of questions like this in our complex number playlist, which the link is in the description if you want to follow along with all the questions that I do. Um, but let's get into it. So the first one, we have two parentheses being multiplied by each other, right? There's a multiplication in here. So it's 3 plus 4i all being multiplied by 3 minus 4i. What happens? Well, this is called the FOIL method, when you have two parentheses being multiplied by each other. However, I know that a lot of students say that they don't teach the FOIL method. I know when I was in school, they taught it using this idea called FOIL. Let me know in the comments if that's even a thing anymore or if I'm just, you know, ancient. But I like to call it, let's all play fair. What's going to happen is your first term, the 3, wants to be multiplied by the first term of the second parenthesis. So it wants to be multiplied by that 3, but we have to play fair. The 3 also needs to be multiplied by that negative 4i. And then the same thing goes for the second term. If the 3 is getting multiplied by those guys, the 4i is definitely going to be multiplied by them. So the 4i wants to be multiplied by the 3, but then you got to play fair. The 4i also wants to be multiplied by that negative 4i. And just be certain that you're using the correct signs. Just make sure that things are positive or things are negative when they should be. All right, so let's try it out. So 3 times 3 is 9, so that's my first term. And then 3 times a negative 4i would be a negative, 3 times 4 is 12, so a negative 12, and then we just pick up that i, so negative 12i. Now we got to be fair. Since we worked with all the three values, now we go on to the next one. Positive 4i wants to be multiplied by 3, so 4 times 3 is 12, and then there was only one i, so I drag it along. And now I have a positive 4i being multiplied by a negative 4i. 4 times 4 is 16. However, there was a negative here, so this would be minus 16. And now when you're multiplying i values, you pick them up. So you had one i here times by another i here. You had two i's. So this would be i squared. Okay. Simplify from here on out, right? I have a negative 12i plus a 12i, and I can only simplify these two terms because they have just i's in them. This guy has an i squared, so I can't simplify it with them. But a negative 12 plus 12 is 0. That gets canceled out. So now we're just left with 9 minus 16i squared. Now, a lot of students will just say, okay, this is simplified, right? However, our simplified complex notation has to have real values, and the real value is just the actual number. In this example, it is the 9. It could have been a negative 2, it could have been a negative 4, it could have been a 400. It's just any number that does not have an i attached to it. Then comes all of our imaginary values, and the imaginary values are the ones that are linked with an i in them. Now notice how I say i, and I did not say i squared. i squared is not a simplified complex number. Any number or any i value that is greater than 1, so i squared, i cubed, i to the fifth, i to the five, you know, hundredth, that is not simplified term. You have to break that down to get it into just i in order to get a simplified complex number. Well, you might be saying, well, Christina, how, how are we going to turn i squared into something that's just an i or something else? Here is 
what we need to know and star this up. This is important. I squared is the same thing as just saying negative one. That's the bridge between, you know, bridging the gap between how do we move forward here. If you see an I squared, it's the same thing as a negative one. Oh, so now I can say that this is just a negative one value. And this, the I squared, is being multiplied by negative 16. So I'm just going to drop this down. And we'll just keep the 9 here, right? So now let's just clean it up. We have 9 minus, let's see, negative 16 times a negative 1 is a positive 16. And now all we have is we don't have any imaginary numbers. We just have all real numbers. 9 plus 16. 9 plus 16 is 25. And that is your final answer for this one. Look at that. That one was pretty fun. Now let's work on the second example. Now this one looks a little different, but we're still using our math principles here. 3 plus 4i all over 2. Okay. So when we have two terms on the top, so in this case we have a 3 and we have a positive 4i, when we have multiple terms on the numerator on the top being divided by a single term on the bottom, you can break these fractions up. You can break them into as many terms as you have on the top. We got to play fair. Math is all about being fair, now that I think about it. So you're going to take your three term, and the three is divided by two, right? Because it's literally over two. So I could say three over two plus, I'm just breaking up the terms. So the second term would be the four I over two. And now I have successfully turned it into a real number. You see how this part is real. It's just the number, right? So this is the real part. And this is the imaginary part. This is the part that has the I to it. But they did say simplified, so I just have to make sure that this is in my most simplified form. Well, I can't do anything with 3 over 2. I can say 1.5, but I like fractions. Am I the only one that likes fractions? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so we'll say 3 over 2. And now let's simplify this. I have a 4 and a 2. So I have a 4 on top, 2 on the bottom. This number that's common between them is a 2 right? The two would turn into a one and two times what will get me four? Oh, two. So now that's just a two I. I don't get rid of the I's because there is no I on the bottom. So this would just be plus two I. And that is the answer for the second one. Three over two or 1.5 plus two I. Not bad. Let's try the same idea for the third one. 6 minus 2i all over 3. It's all over one single denominator. So I could break the two terms up on the top, the 6 and the negative 2i, and put each one over that denominator, over the 3. So let's break it up. I can say that I have 6 over 3, 6 over 3 as the first part, minus minus 2i over 3. Real imaginary. Now we just got to simplify it. Oh, I can definitely simplify 6 divided by 3. What's 6 divided by 3? 2, right? So I have 2 minus, uh, can I do anything with this fraction 2 over 3? I mean, I can actually do the division, that would be 0.6666667, but I like fractions, so I'm just going to leave it as 2 over 3, and then you can just leave it, leave it, leave it as i here, or I can, you know, maybe say 2i over 3. It doesn't matter. I guess I'll leave it like this. And that is your final answer for the third one. Okay, guys, what do you think? These are pretty easy. 
eyes could be a little scary, but just know that it's the same math principles whether we treat this as an X or a Y or an A or a B or a C or whatever variable, and just remember that I squared equals a negative one. All right? So give this video a thumbs up if, you, if it helped you out and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more math questions coming out. We got chem questions, we got physics questions coming out to you. Basically, I mean, hopefully in the future we'll have, you know, a whole library of so many different subjects for you guys that will help you in your education journey. All right. So thank you so much. We appreciate you all. Love you guys. And I will see you all in the next video. Have a great day.